Hey, algebra students. Today we're going to be dividing polynomials. Now, dividing polynomials is actually not that different from dividing numbers. So let's refresh our memories on exactly what we do when we're dividing numbers. So let's say we have, uh, I don't know, like 529 divided by 7. Okay? I want to divide 529 by 7. What do I do? Well, Does that look familiar? We learned that in elementary school, didn't we? 7 goes into 52 how many times? Well, that would be 7 because 7 times 7 is 49. And then what do we do? We subtract 49. 52 minus 49 is 3. And then we drop down this 9 here and we say 7 goes into 39 how many times? Uh, well, that would be 5. 5 times 7 is 35. And again, we subtract. And we get 4, and we say 7 goes into 4 how many times, and it doesn't. Okay, so now we're left with a remainder of 4, and the way we treat that remainder is we say it's 4 sevenths in addition to 75. Okay? That's what we do when, we are, when we're dividing numbers. So now let's divide a polynomial. And uh, we're going to divide 3x cubed minus 16x squared minus 17x plus 27, all of that divided by x minus 6. All right. Well, let's do the exact same thing. We'll set it up the same way. And we're going to say, let me move this down a little bit. There we go. And so we're going to put x minus 6 right there. And we're going to put our polynomial inside of there. So 3x cubed minus 16x squared minus 17x plus 27. And uh, now, remember last time we said 7 goes into, and I didn't say 529. I just said the first part of the number. We do the same thing here. Don't look at the whole polynomial. Just look at the first term. And in particular, look at the first term here as well. How many times will x go into 3x cubed? Well, 3x squared times because 3x squared times x is 3x cubed. But I also have to multiply 3x squared times this negative 6 as well, so that's going to give me negative 18x squared. Okay? Now, what did I do here? I subtracted that number. So I'm going to subtract this. If you're anything like me, the best way to subtract is you change the signs and then you add. That's, I find that easier, otherwise I mess up on my, uh, my, my operations. Okay? So 3x cubed minus 3x cubed, that's nothing. Negative uh, 16x squared plus 18x squared is going to be 2x squared. Now, what did I do over here? I dropped down this 9. What am I going to do over here? I'm going to drop down this minus 17x. Okay? How many times does x go into 2x squared? Why, that would be 2x times. Because 2x times x is 2x squared. And 2x times negative 6 is negative 12x. Again, subtract. And again, if you're like me, you just change the signs and then you add. That goes away. And negative 17x plus 12x is negative 5x. Okay? Negative 5x divided by x is negative 5. So negative 5 times x is negative 5x. And negative 5 times negative 6 is, uh-oh, hey, I've forgotten the... I forgot last time to drop down this plus 27, so let's do that. And now we'll do the negative 5 times negative 6 and get a plus 30. Again, best way to subtract is to change the signs and then add them up. 27 plus negative 30 is negative 3. And so now I say, how many times will x minus 6 go into negative 3? It doesn't. So I'm going to say minus... 3 over x minus 6. You could also say plus negative 3 over x minus 6. Same thing. All right. Well, that wasn't so bad. Let's do another one. Let's do... Uh, actually, let me just clear the whole board. Let's do uh, 4x cubed plus 8x squared minus 13x minus 14, and we're going to divide this by 2x 
plus 5. Okay. All right, again, let's uh, set this up. Uh, 4x cubed plus 8x squared minus 13x minus 14. And I'm going to put my 2x plus 5 here. And again, I ask the same questions. I focus on this term and this term. How many times will 2x go into 4x cubed? Uh, I believe that goes in 2x squared times um, because uh, 2x squared times 2x is 4x cubed. And then 2x squared times 5 is 10x squared. Again, change the signs and add them up. That goes away, and we have negative 2x squared. How many times does 2x go into negative 2x squared? Well, negative x, right? Because negative times positive is negative, and negative x times, or, and x times 2x is 2x squared. I keep forgetting this. I forgot to drop down the negative 13x, okay? <coughs> negative x times positive 5 is negative 5x. Again, change the signs and add them up. And I get negative 13x plus 5x, which is negative 8x. I'm not going to forget this time. Drop down the minus 14. 2x goes into negative 8x. Well, that would be negative 4 times. So negative 4 times 2x is negative 8x. And negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. And again, you're going to change the signs and add them up. And I get 6 over 2x plus 5, plus 6 over 2x plus 5. Okay, now you may be asking yourself, well, is this quotient, is this, uh, is this a polynomial? It's not a polynomial. It's not a polynomial because of this right there. You can't have, uh, you can't have a fraction with a variable in the denominator and have it be a polynomial. But if you think about numbers, you can take a whole number and divide it by another whole number and get a number that's not a whole number. So kind of think of polynomials as being analogous to whole numbers. And uh, this little rational part right here is analogous to a fraction. All right? Uh, let's keep on going. Let's do another one. Let's do... Let's do x cubed minus 29x plus 38. And we're going to divide that by x plus 6. Okay. So again, we'll set it up, our long division. And I'm going to put x plus 6 here, and I'm going to put x cubed here, and then I'm going to do something a little different. Because you may have noticed, hey, there's no x squared term there. Well, place value is actually kind of important here. So I'm going to put 0x squared minus 29x plus 38. And you may be asking yourself, why is it so important? Just follow through and you'll see why. Okay, x goes into x cubed, x squared times. And so now x squared times x is x cubed, x squared times 6 is 6x squared. And this is why it's important. Because had I had the negative 29, the minus 29x right there, I'd have an x adding to an x squared term, and those are not like terms. And so life is going to be a lot easier if we just stay organized and we keep our cubes there, our squares there, our x's there, and our constants there. All right, so back to what we're doing. Uh, we have to subtract here, which means change the signs. And I end up with negative 6x squared. Drop down the minus 29x. OK? x goes into negative 6x squared, negative 6x times. Negative 6x times x is negative 6x squared. Negative 6x times 6, ha, excuse me, times 6 is negative 36x. Again, change the signs and add them up because what we're actually doing is subtracting. And I get negative 29 plus 36 is 7x. Bring down that plus 38. And finally, x goes into 7x seven times. 7 times x is 7x. 7 times 6 is 42. Change the signs and add them up, and I get negative 4. And so now my remainder is going to be 
minus 4 over x plus 6. All right, that's our answer. Let me give you one more. This last one, let's make it a big one. Let's do 2x to the fourth plus 5x cubed plus 15x squared plus 49x minus 28 over x squared plus 9. All right. Now, uh, you may have noticed something a little different. Ooh, I have a quadratic in my denominator there. In the past, we just had linear factors in the denominator. This time, it's a quadratic. Ha uh ha, -huh. let's see how this works. OK, x squared plus 9, 2x to the fourth plus 5x cubed plus 15x squared plus 49x minus 28. I always make that a little short. OK, and uh, let's just get going. x squared goes into 2x to the fourth, 2x squared times, because 2x squared times x squared is 2x to the fourth. Now I'm going to do 2x squared times 9, and i got to be careful, again, because of the place value. 2x squared times 9 is 18x squared. Don't put it there. Put it here. Plus 18x squared. Because I want my x squareds and my x squareds to be over each other. All right? So x to the fourth here, x to the third here, x squared here, x, and constant. Again, change the sign and add them up. And this gets dropped down, 5x cubed, and then I have minus 3x squared, and remember to drop down one more, plus 49x. So I actually end up with a trinomial here. Well, that's, that's not unusual, and don't, don't be alarmed by it. Uh, frequently, we have trinomials when we have quadratic functions. Okay, x squared goes into 5x cubed. That would be 5x times, plus 5x. 5x times x squared is 5x cubed. 5x times 9 is 45x, and I'm not going to put it here. I'm going to put it here, plus 45x. Change the signs and add them up. And I end up with negative 3x squared plus 4x. Is that right? That looks right. Minus 28. How many times does x squared go to negative 3x squared? I believe that would be negative 3 times. Negative 3 times x squared is negative 3x squared. Negative 3 times 9 is negative 27, and that goes over here. So my remainder is actually going to be 4x. Uh, oop, I'm sorry, forgot to change the signs. Change the signs. 4x minus 1 divided by x squared minus 9, because at this point, x squared doesn't go into 4x. So I'm going to say plus 4x minus 1 over x squared plus 9. This looks kind of like kind of a weird remainder, uh, because it's got that linear, uh, uh, the linear polynomial in the numerator. But that's OK. As long as the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, it's appropriate for a remainder. OK. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next video.